Did you know there is a way to get the best price from a builder if you are doing work to a home in the UK? You could save thousands of pounds on the cost of renovating your home or building a house extension and it has nothing to do with the design, construction method or materials being used. It all depends on timing and it works differently if you're renovating inside your home or building an extension. My name is Neil and I've run my own architecture practice in Edinburgh since 2009. I specialize in altering and extending private homes, and I also offer online consultations to homeowners across the UK. I often work for people who have never hired an architect or set foot on a building site, so I spend a lot of time explaining the process to my clients. And one thing I've noticed is that homeowners don't think of construction as seasonal work. But it is, especially for smaller building companies, and it's something you can take advantage of depending on the type of work you're doing. In the same way that strawberries cost less in summer and more in winter, building work often gets more expensive when the weather is bad, but not for every type of project, and I will show you how to make this work for you. Let's say you're planning a house extension. It's going to need a foundation and almost certainly new drains. Both of these things involve digging outdoors, and who wants to do that over the winter months? Equally, if you're planning to build a dormer on the roof of your house, it's far harder to do this work in the cold, wet and windy months of the year. Keep in mind that in the UK, we use a lot of bricks and blocks in house building, and even if the weather is dry, it's not possible to use mortar if the temperature gets too cold. The NHBC say it shouldn't be less than 3 degrees when laying bricks because the mortar won't set properly. The same is true for concrete, so working on foundations and walls over winter is almost guaranteed to be hit with delays. Some of this could be described as common sense, even for someone with no construction experience, while other aspects of it require technical knowledge. But the thing is, building work does happen over the winter months. People build house extensions, foundations, roofs and dormers in December, and I've done it for my own clients. Just look at the mess on this building site, and on this one. There are three reasons why projects like this go ahead despite the winter. First, the clients were willing to accept it will take longer and cost more. Second, they have some pressing reason to start the work at the wrong time of year and pay a premium because they felt under pressure. Every year, I have at least one client who tells me they're expecting a child, or their family are planning a visit from overseas, or they're starting a new job, or the kids are starting school, so the building has to be finished at a certain time. Now, I'll come back to why this is the wrong way to think about construction, but the third reason why jobs like this are built over winter is that mid-sized construction firms are willing to do the work. In fact, they need to do the work to survive financially. Building firms that have offices, project managers, workshops, and are capable of running several jobs at the same time need to keep their staff working in order to cover their overheads. They often build larger projects that sometimes take more than 12 months to complete, and all of this means they cannot avoid working outdoors over winter. For homeowners who want a job finished on a tight deadline, regardless of the season, these mid-sized building contractors will do the work but only for a premium. Now, if you're watching this and you don't want to pay that premium, how do you get the best price? Well, you need to understand two things. First off, the events in your life have no bearing on the reality of construction. If you can accept that your house extension won't be finished until after your child is born, you could save thousands of pounds. The same goes for family visiting from overseas, starting a new job, or the first day at school. These are all important events, but please don't turn them into a deadline for your building project unless you're prepared to pay 20 or 30% above the going rate. Second, you need to see the world from the perspective of a small building company, the stereotypical man in a van. These builders just want an easy life, and I don't blame them. They take on one project at a time and usually build house extensions and internal alterations. They typically expect any job to last between three and six months, and this is the important bit, in the ideal world, they want to build a house extension over the summer, and then move indoors to build a renovation project over the winter. If you are planning to alter the layout of a home in the UK, maybe renovate an older property, knock some load-bearing walls, rewiring, fit a new kitchen or bathroom, that type of project is a dream come true for smaller building firms, but only if you're willing to carry out the work over the winter months. I've worked with many small builders over the years, and I know they will go out of their way to win work like that. 
Who wants to be digging foundations in November or February when they could be indoors, fitting a kitchen or plastering a ceiling instead? Turn the radio on and the heating up. Ideal. The people who run small building firms are usually on the tools, meaning the boss is often working on the building site and has a personal interest in creating as comfortable a working environment as possible. Mid-sized building firms, on the other hand, are often run by people who work in an office. They just factor in that work over winter takes longer, will be delayed by bad weather and staff illness, but it won't affect them personally. They aren't uncaring, it's just the nature of the job for the owner of a mid-sized building firm. It's their responsibility to run the firm, manage the jobs, bring in new work, not to actually do that work themselves. But you can see where the motivation lies. If you want the best possible price for a renovation project in the UK, get a builder who is hands-on, then tell them you want to carry out that work over winter. If you are building a house extension, the same holds true, only plan to start the work in late spring to run over the summer months. And in both cases, please resist the temptation to connect the deadline for your project to events in your personal life. If you are prepared to be flexible and follow my advice, it also increases the chance builders will agree to participate in a competitive tender for your project. You could have several smaller building firms lining up to bid for your project, and that gives you the edge when negotiating the price. The first thing builders ask me when I talk to them about bidding for a project is, when do they want to start? Now, they aren't being overly keen or wanting to start work immediately. They're trying to work out if my client is prepared to be flexible. I'm not saying that builders will deliberately lose money to win your job, but if you are planning a renovation and your neighbor is planning a house extension and you both want to do the work over winter, you will have a far easier time getting multiple building firms to compete for that work. That means the builders will price as competitively as possible to win the job while still making a profit. You also have the advantage that labour costs typically make up a larger proportion of a renovation project than materials. The opposite is usually the case for a house extension. The builder can't do much about the cost of materials, but they can usually be more flexible on labour costs. Of course, not all projects are as simple as either a house extension or an internal alteration. Most of my projects involve both, like here, where the interior of the house was renovated while an extension was under construction. If you are planning a job like this, you need to work out where the majority of time will be spent. You should always talk to your architect about how the design will be built. Could the extension be built independently from the work inside your house? At what point will the cut through happen? Now, I'm a big fan of integrating new extensions with the existing house rather than just sticking a box on the building. But integration takes time and exposes the house to the elements, so it limits your options for phasing the work to avoid bad weather. You really want to build this type of design in fine weather. And if you are planning an extension, check out the sponsor of today's video. Sunflex UK design and manufacture high quality aluminium windows and doors in the UK. I've used them on several of my own projects and I believe they offer a great balance between cost and quality. Don't just take my word for it though, check out these videos I made, which include the costs. There's a link up here and in the description below. So if you are thinking about altering a home anywhere in the UK or buying a house that needs to be adapted to suit your needs, check out the reallifearchitecture.co.uk website. It's full of free guidance and blog posts packed with useful information for homeowners. And you can also book a consultation with me if you need specific advice about your property. And if you found this video useful, please hit the like button. It really helps the channel. And if you want to see more content like this, you should subscribe. I make new videos every week.